what, what is this justice conference? And I said, it's Christians talking about stuff that matters. And they're like, that happens? You know, and like, yeah, it does happen. And it's happening more and more. So this is a beautiful thing to be a part of. I'm hoping for some really cutting edge discussions and conversations that are going on. There's uh, over 20 different countries represented, 50 languages. To be able to have this conversation in such a, a multi-ethnic, multicultural setting, uh, and to be able to go deep with practitioners as well as authors, thought leaders, um, it's exciting. I still remember, like it was yesterday, walking into that facility and just being completely devastated by what I saw. Walking through baby rooms and seeing babies that were just a few days, even a few weeks old, that were just malnourished and covered in skin diseases and dying. It just broke my heart and I came away from that experience and just prayed and said, God, you know, what, what do we do when we see something like this? And felt that incredible challenge from God saying to me, well, you're here, what will you do? We've got a lot of asylum seekers in Hong Kong from Sri Lanka, from a lot of African countries, Somalia, the Congo, Togo, India, Bangladesh. If they don't come, they might die in their countries, um, usually for reasons of religious persecution or the maybe political rivalry. You're actually driving sex trafficking every time you visit a prostitute, you watch pornography online, that's highly involved in sex trafficking. And even beginning conversation and men holding men accountable can make a great difference. We have Muslims and Christians and animists and people of all different beliefs and, and backgrounds standing together in this woman's defense because they understood that religious freedom was the antidote to the oppression of President Bashir and these, these laws that are being imposed on them. They recognize that as women or as ethnic minorities, whether they're from Darfur or the Nuba Mountains, that no one will be free unless everybody has the freedom of conscience. Over one million people were murdered inside a hundred days in a systematic, organized way. Everybody in that country is affected by the genocide. Every, every family, every church, everything. So you can't go there but not be affected by that. And so we, it took us on a journey. There's 21 million people in slavery. About 75% of them are in forced labor. And 60% of them are associated with supply chains, which means that they are working in factories and sweatshops and so forth that support the products that we basically buy. As consumers, as I mentioned, go and basically go online before you buy products to make sure that the products that you have are responsibly done. Just in the last 30 years, there's been tremendous change. The UN said in the year 2000 that the Millennium Development Goals was to cut the instance of extreme poverty in half. And in fact, the world is going to accomplish that. Leadership does not generate followership. Leadership generates leaders. If the people you love and know are being injured, are you going to run from them or are you going to stay in the game and try to help them? And so that's part of the beauty of being locally run is now the conflict is hit again and things have gotten difficult. They not only are staying because they have to stay, they're staying because they want to stay. Right. These are their brothers and sisters who need water now. Christ calls us to love all people and especially he calls us to love our enemies. And, and as a Palestinian, as a Christian, this is a call that I adhere to, I want to follow, I want to commit my life fully to understanding what does it mean for me as a Palestinian who is suffering from the Israeli military occupation to respond by love. God is doing something globally about these issues uh, for justice, against trafficking, and that's exciting to see that more and more the same spirit is igniting a fire in people all around the world. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. to show up.